Hi, welcome to episode 131 of the Passionate Spinner podcast. My name is Tracy. You can find me as Schnüffelt here on Ravelry and Instagram. There is a Ravelry group for the podcast. Please come over and join. Thank you so much for being here. So today I'm going to start my podcast very differently than I normally would. Because in my last episode, right at the end in my everything else segment, I talked about why I stand by Ravelry. And I feel the need to speak about this again, because I feel like not everybody sees that in the end. You know, some people just decide to leave after the knitting, which is fine because, you know, it's a knitting podcast. But I wanted to make it clear again, so everybody knows where I stand. Um, so I already said I totally support Ravelry in their decision to Trump, uh, to Trump, <laughs> to ban all Trump support, because in my opinion, he is a racist, a sexist, a homophobic beep. I'm not going to say what I wanted to say, but um, he's not a good person. And you can support whoever you want. But if that someone hurts a lot of people, and we're talking about like two thirds of the population of the world, because every BIPOC person, every member of the LGBTQIA plus community, every woman, basically, um, it's not something I can stand for. It's, I cannot stand for it. And, you know, if you tell me that, ooh, I, I think he's great and he's not a racist. Well, <laughs> he is. There's so many accounts that show exactly what he is. And if you still stand by this person, you are guilty by association. That's, that's how it works. And if you got on a Ravelry and read the announcement and your first thought was, free speech, how dare they? I have one question for you. Why wasn't your first thought something like, huh, I wonder why this is happening? What happened? What is going on here? Why are they doing this? Because if you had thought that and did a bit of research, you would have found out that this was a step they felt they needed to take after a person of the BIPOC community, community was horribly harassed on Instagram and on Ravelry. And to make sure that things like this will never happen again, um, they did what they did. And... For everybody else who said, oh, they should have banned all hate speech. Well, they did 10 years ago, but I'm guessing that you, just like me, never bothered to read the terms of use because who, who actually reads those things, right? Um, so I feel a lot of people are crying out without educating themselves first. And that is something I just don't like. <laughs> I've seen so many videos creep up on YouTube from people explaining why they left Ravelry. And all of it boils down to free speech, to blanket labeling, and all of the ones I've seen are made by middle-aged white women, all of them. If there are others, they're sure, sure they are, but all the ones I have seen so far were by that specific group. And that is very telling. So, yeah, I wanted to make that very clear again. So if that is something you cannot live with because you think that your opinion is better than mine, you're free to go. Um, what I do not want and what I will not allow is fights in the comments and you attacking others in the comment section. Also, if you feel like I'm talking to you specifically, Maybe you should think about why that is. Why do you feel like I'm talking to you? Yeah, that's just a thought. So, uh, yeah, I think that's basically what I wanted to say. Okay, now let's get back to the podcast. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> that sentence actually just brought another thing to my mind. All the people who said, oh... Let's get back to knitting. Who cares about politics? Well, everybody should care about politics. You know, it's kind of important. And also, if you are one of those people who thinks that that's the way it should be, 
you have never had the need to take care about politics, you know, because you have always lived a life where it didn't really matter, which is also so privileged and so telling. And to be honest, I thought like that for a long time, you know, why, why would I care? I'm fine. But the older I get, the more I think about other people, you know, we live in a world where everybody thinks about themselves first. And if you stop for a second and not think about you, but the person next to you, it can change a lot of your outlook on life. And, you know, all the people who've been crying out about my free speech, blah, blah, blah. you did not do that because you thought about yourself. And also, talking about free speech, Ravelry is a privately owned company. They can put in their terms of use and their policies whatever they want. And if you do not agree, you can go. And also, just to make that very clear, Ravelry is free. Don't pay for it, you know? It's, <laughs> it's there for you to use. The only thing you have to do is keep to the guidelines. It's actually quite easy. Good. Now done with the rivalry. Back to my knitting. I have not, uh, I, that, that. <laughs> I don't have anything for what I'm wearing because, you know, I am wearing stuff, but I'm not wearing handmade. I have nothing for knitting in the past because I was in a slump. I didn't feel like knitting. I didn't feel like sewing. I didn't feel like anything. I didn't read. I just eh, I had an awful week. And I'm going to talk about that in the end. So for knitting in the present, I have two things that I want to show. And they're both new things. I, I think, wait, they're not new. You go over here. Yes, they're both new. So first thing that I cast on is something that I talked about last week. And it is the Sun Tea by Laura Ehler. And it looks like this. I have finished the top part and I have picked up the stitches and I'm continuing, or no, I'm working my way down the body. The thing is, my yarn is not quite enough, so I'm doing stripes, and I settled on 17 rows of black and three rows of the variegated. Um, because I thought, you know, I think I remember <laughs> from my education that uneven numbers are always more pleasing to the eye. So that's what I'm doing here. I hope I remember things correctly. The other thing, <laughs> While I was in my slump and I just like mm, didn't feel like anything, I was looking for yarn for a project and I found it and I'm gonna show it later. And I couldn't find needles for it. So I looked everywhere for needles. I, had, I ended up having to order some because I couldn't find any. But I stumbled across yarn in the process and I had that put away for a shawl and I didn't feel like knitting that shawl anymore. But it's DK weight and I only have three skeins. Per yarn. So I have three skeins of this yarn from Schoppelwolle and it is their Cashmere Queen base which is 35% cashmere, 45% merino wool, 20 silk and that's it. <laughs> yeah and 20 silk. And the other yarn I'm using is a plant dyed wool by no idea who and it is a 65% um, wool and 35% silk. So three skeins each, 350 gram skeins each. And yeah, I looked through my patterns on Ravelry because I love Ravelry. And um, I did the advanced search, you know, and I put in all the things that I wanted to have. And I ended up finding the perfect pattern in my library. Now this, my hair is awful again. I decided to knit the Netherton cardigan, which is the um, cover project from I Pom Pom Magazine issue number one. And it's a cropped cardigan with a deep V and three quarter length sleeves. And I decided to go for this one because of my limited amount of yarn. And because I have two different colors, I'm doing big stripes, you know, bold. Is it called bold stripes? I don't know. So 
here is what I have so far. I've cast it on and I've finished the first color and I'm in the second color and the stripes are all going to be the same width because I think that that will look better in the end. So yeah, I'm as this is a top-down raglan, I'm going to finish the body as it's written and then I use whatever I have left to knit the sleeves. And we'll see how, how that will work out. So that's the other thing I have on my needles. Two new things. For knitting in the future, I also have two things. The first thing is um, the project that I had to order needles for. And it is the Once and Floral pattern by Max the Knitter. It's beautiful. It's this sweater here. Mine is also going to be black. And I'm going to use Lana Grossa Slow Wool Lino, which is, um, what's the word? It's organic. It's organic yarn. And this has 85% merino wool and 15% linen. So this is my main color. The white in here is the linen content. Then the, the gray in his sweater, the background color, is going to be this yarn here. Oh, this yarn here. It's Regia Angora Merino. And that has, uh, what do you have? 65% merino wool, 25% polyamide, and 10% angora. So that's the background color. Then the roses are going to be in this ruby red, dark pinkish colorway. And it is Alte Künste. It's plant dye yarn from Germany. Um, it's 74%. <laughs> I cannot talk. It's 75% um, wool, 15 silk, and 10 linen. So these are similar. And I have decided to do the actual leaves that are around the roses in green. And I'm going to use this green. And this yarn is, what are you? It's Tactile Fiber Arts Studio, naturally dyed yarn and fiber. And it's 100% merino superwash. So this is my plan. I really want to start this. I just didn't feel like winding yarn. And also, I have to wait for the needles because everything I knit right now is on a US4, a three and a half mil needle. And I couldn't find any. So I ordered, I think, six tips, six pairs of tips to start all the things. So that's the thing I want to make for myself. But I also want to make something for Tim. And I decided, because, you know, I love Stephen West, and I'm knitting a penguono for myself. And he has started a penguono knit along yesterday that I cannot enter with my penguono because, you know, I started it. And I know it's only this big, but it, it started. So I decided to get the penguino pattern, which is the penguono for kids. Isn't this cute? So, I'm going to use all the blues. I have this 100 gram skein of hand dyed worsted weight yarn from Germany that I am going to use as one of the main yarns. And then I have Riga Angora in a blue. I have Joanne's Sensations and Patton's Croy in blues. And somewhere in here, I have some Wollmeisen minis some birdies in blue. So yeah, and a bunch of other yarns, but I'm gonna make that for my son. And I think it's going to be super cute. So that's my plan. That's it for knitting in the future. I have no idea when I'm going to start eat any, um, any of those two projects because I just don't feel like knitting right now. Um, I do not have new stuff, which is good because I have enough stuff. Mm for reading, listening, watching. I've read one book on my Kindle and I'm gonna show you the mm, cover. <laughs> I read Peril in Paxton Park, like this. Uh, it's by J.A. E. Whiting. It's a Paxton Park mystery. It's the first in the series. And um, I really liked it. It was, you know, it's a cozy mystery. It has like 140 pages or something like that. So it's super easy, super quick to read. And um, 
I enjoyed it. It wasn't the best book ever, but it wasn't the worst either. So it's somewhere in the middle. And it's about Shelley who moves to Paxton Park, which is a, you know, um, you have ski lifts in winter and whitewater rafting in summer and bike trails and whatever. And she's a baker and she starts in the bakery. And then she stumbles across a dead body because, you know, it's a cozy mystery. That's kind of what they do. And um, yeah, it's it's fun. It was okay. Then the biggest thing this week is listening. Last week, I had read The Undead Uproar by Amanda M. Lee, which is the fifth book in the Charlie Rhodes Cozy Mystery series. And I had finished it. And the day after, I just actually really wanted to start the series over because I just enjoy the series a lot. Um, but I really dislike rereading books because if I spend time reading, I want to read something new. I have no problem, however, listening to things that I have read. And I have absolutely no problem listening to things that I like about a hundred times. So <laughs> after I finished reading the book, I started listening to the whole series again. And I finished four of the five books. So the first thing I, I listened to is The Bigfoot Blunder. These are all on Audible. Um, then the next one was The Chupacabra Catastrophe. It's book number two in the series. Book number three, where, where are you, is The Werewolf, whoops. Book number four, The Megalodon Mix-Up. So these are the ones I have finished listening to. Um, I talked about what the series is about lots of times, so I'm not gonna get into it. What I'm listening to right now is the last book in the series. It's The Undead Uproar, and that's the one I just read because it just came out. So, I love these. The only thing that bugs me, and I know that is such a first world problem. <laughs> it's a five book series so far. There are two planned where there's already the title out. And after the third book, they changed the narrator. And her voice is quite similar to the first narrator's voice when she talks normally. But when she does the voices for the people, it's very different. And that bugs me. <laughs> I know it's a stupid thing, but it just really... Because I really love the first narrator a lot. She was great. And now the second one is just not like her. You know, she's different. She's good as well. And if I had started the series with her, I probably would feel the same way. But mm, yeah, I just, I don't get it. Why, oh, why isn't it possible to have one person in a book series? Why do they have to change in the middle? Okay, yeah, like I said, <laughs> it's a nice problem to have. I have nothing for watching because I have not watched anything. I have nothing. The only thing I watched on is YouTube stuff from Ink Master. That's the only thing I watched. I haven't even watched any podcasts because I just, it's so hot. And I'm not inside. You know, when I watch stuff, it's short videos on my phone. And only because I didn't feel like doing anything else. So I listened to four audiobooks since last we spoke. And, you know, I didn't do anything else. I spent a lot of time on Pinterest because that was the only thing I wanted to do. I just, yeah, I feel the... But yesterday I sat down to sew because I had a custom order for a skirt and she asked me if she could have it uh, until Saturday because she needed it. I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm going to sit down and actually sew it up. And it's a skirt from um, Simplicity. I only have the line drawings because it was part of a magazine here in Germany. And this was a magazine from like 2014, maybe even earlier. And I have made that one before. It's this skirt here that I've made years ago. And I wear a lot. And she saw me wearing this and she fell in love. So she asked me if I would make one for her. And I sent her fabric options of things that I had. And she settled on this Amy Butler print that I had 
a full bolt of that I got super cheap and I made a, a dress for myself. So I had, I was quite happy that she chose this one because I have already made them think something for myself out of it. So I finished this. I put up pictures on Instagram this morning and I also made my own version because I have cut this, like I said, a few weeks ago already and it's done now. So this is mine. It's this beautiful toucan and parrot print and you know it's an elasticated waist it's super easy to make the only thing it takes forever is the, the the pockets you know if it hadn't didn't have these huge pockets it would be super quick what i changed and what i also changed in my first version is the button here that's not supposed to be there but if it is not there this pocket you know is so big it just stands up but i just didn't like that so I added those buttons to both of the skirts I made and also to the one that I made as a custom order. So that's what I did. I made those skirts and that's all for sewing. So huh, that leaves me with everything else. This is going to be a very short episode. That's good. Okay, everything else. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the Summer Book Club that I'm hosting together with Sadie from the Yarnivore podcast. And it is the Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. We started reading this book on July 1st, which is Monday. And as you can see, you know, my bookmark is still on page one. I have not started this. I should because I really want to. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to finish listening to my fifth audiobook in the series today. And then I can start this book. Um, I've used this bookmark because I'm the nerd who matches the book to the bookmark. I made this when I was still a teacher and um, it does look like snakes. It's green, you know, kind of, I felt like this would fit the bill. So for our first week assignment, we are reading part one of the book. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So um, I am referring to the page numbers and everything for the UK edition of this book. And I put all the page numbers and everything in the Ravelry group in the book club thread. So we are reading this part of the book. It's part number one, Strange News Out of Essex. First bit we are reading this week. And um, it's, I think it goes on until page 134 or something similar. Oh, exactly 134. So. That's the first week's chunk to read. And on Monday, we're going to start on the second part of the book. And I will open a thread in the Ravelry group after I finish this podcast, where people who have already read the book can start discussing what they have read. It's a spoiler thread. So if you have not finished the assignment, don't enter that thread. The next thing, the next VKN is tomorrow, Saturday the... Saturday, the 6th of July, 9 p.m. Berlin time. Like always, I'm going to put up a link in the Ravelry group. If you want to join, click on that link and you are in. That's all you have to do. And then, mental health talk. Um, I, like I said, have felt off all week and it's been kind of a shitty week and I didn't feel like doing anything and I didn't like myself and everything was just like meh. And I am like a hundred percent sure that that is because tomorrow is my dad's birthday. And it's the second one where he isn't around to celebrate. And it sucks. You know? And I'm pretty sure that this is the reason why I have been feeling like shit all week because it's my dad's birthday, you know? It's a, it's a milestone of sorts and it just sucks. So. Uh, yeah, I hope that after tomorrow my mood will start to brighten again because this is just eh. And I talked to my husband about it today. I said, you know, I don't feel like doing anything. I haven't done house. I haven't been doing anything. I just, I sit around and I look at my phone or stare in the sky and just, I'm not capable of doing anything. And 
I just said to him, you know, I wonder if that's because of dad's birthday. And he said, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. I was like, but yeah, you know, it's like almost two years. In October, it's going to be two years that he's gone. Will this ever stop? And he's like, well, it takes time. But I feel like this is just, you know, it's the never ending story. I wonder in 40 years, if I'm still around in 40 years, will I still feel like shit or will this ever stop? You know, will it go away? When I was a kid, um, I always had a very strong bond with my dad. You know, I'm a total daddy's girl. I'm very much like my dad. And I always felt like he would live forever. You know, when I'm 80, he would still be there being over 120 years old, still going strong, being at my side and we would drop dead together. That's what I always thought would happen, which is, you know, a ridiculous thought, but still. <laughs> Turns out life doesn't work that way. So this is just awful. <laughs> and I just feel like, shit, I hope this will go away. Um, but yeah, there's way more important things going on in the world right now, you know? And I feel like me complaining, no, it's not complaining. It's like grieving and whining about stuff is, very small fish compared to other things and to compared to what other people are going through so i feel like i don't have a right to actually whine around and complain and be like eh. but being inside my body you know and having my experiences and feeling what i am feeling this is the biggest shit i've ever had going on and it sucks so yeah um gonna go away it will I just have to believe in it okay um I think I'm gonna stop now because this has been a bit map, map, map. um good now I am going to let you all go please remember if you have something to say say it nicely or don't say it at all um and yeah, I'm going to stop. I hope you all have a wonderful week. I will hopefully talk to you again next week. If I find the time and if I have stuff to show, you know. Um, so yeah, take care and enjoy everything you do. Bye.